Um, so the, the last one uh, in district and um, strategic planning was again um, staff advice. <laughs> Sorry, we we hadn't quite finished going around, but that's all right. Carry on. There seem to be numbers for four thirty, so I just. <laughs> um, so again, just referring to your um, table, the um, review update of the heritage strategy. Um, um, so that's 21,000. You asked for some staff advice. There's there's no um, legislative or, or um, massive risk other than reputational risk to communities having um, uh, asked for it. It can be uh, from a staff perspective. It can be either deferred or uh, the ta uh, sorry your table, the peach table. Um, it's in the advice, the additional advice that you yep. requested. That one. Yep. Um, so. So again, it is currently in the budget. If there was a show of hands, the majority to remove it, we put a resolution up. Review update of the heritage strategy. Um, <laughs> so Martin. Martin. Sorry, I'm not finding it. Where is it? Uh, under the district. Right at the top, there it is. Thank you. I'm just going to start talking with the right. person through the chair. Page four, top of the page. Can I just ask a question on this? Can you explain a little bit more about what this is? So, my understanding was when the district plan came up for a review in, two, in the late 2000s, um, uh, a heritage a heritage strategy was prepared to assist with identifying. Um, places of historic heritage significant for uh, scheduling in the district plan, for protection in the district plan, and for uh, providing uh, some uh, ca council direction on how those places would be managed. So the district plan is sort of the carrot, is the stick. It's the thing that we do to help protect places that have historic heritage significance. And the carrot is some of the incentives that council provides. And one of those incentives, I understand, is to assist people who came with resource consents to provide them with grant funding. So, um, and, and so there, there was, it, it was, it was part of the fund, the heritage fund was linked to the strategy. The strategy was how ca council intends to manage historic heritage in the district. So that's fine. And fully supportive. Why does it need money? What What is that used for? So part of the money uh, would be, I expect, to, to engage a consultant because we have no in-house historic heritage specialist to look at the for example, the have we got have we got the right places protected? Is there anything more in the district that we haven't identified that needs to be protected so in the district plan? And then how else can we manage those resources? Just, just sort of helping me understand. So this would be, for example, someone doing a renovation on a historic building. So we would engage a architect with that experience to do a review of that to make sure that what they're doing is in keeping with that building. Is it? Just review strategy. Yeah. So so if I go back to first base. The historic, the heritage strategy that we've got now was prepared to assist with the development of the district plan uh, lists that, of places that have historic heritage significance. So that work was done by a consultant. We have a list of buildings now and of other places, places of importance to, to Maori and archaeological sites in the plan. The strategy is how we're going to manage those other than the protections offered by the district plan. Have so it's seen? other mechanisms in addition to the district plan. So that's what the strategy basically lays out. Have you seen? We'll go to Martin and then come to you, Gary, please. Yeah. Martin. Yeah, so the heritage strategy refers specifically and exclusively to heritage buildings, as I understand. That is not my understanding. It refers to historic heritage, which has a definition in the RMA. Because the specific definition under the RME. Right, but I think what we heard in some submissions was about the actual someone brings a 
ancient egg beater from the 18th century. And it's, it was a, people were taught one, submitters were talking about the protection for those sort for that sort of heritage. And I would support a review of a heritage strategy to widen the strategy to actually um, account for groups like Treasury here in Thames and the Tyra Heritage Folk and the Mercury Bay Museum as to how they um, are supported to look after our Tonga, our, our treasure, our heritage. That, that, so, so I very much support. That could be part that. of the review of the heritage strategy. Um, what we're saying is that we don't, we don't see that, given that we are in a bare essentials budget and that we've already identified the places of greatest significance to us in the district plan, um, we think that that the review of the, up, the update of the heritage strategy at this point in time is probably not yeah. needed. So, so I guess it, it's your decision um, and... I'm just going to comment that I think that's the wrong vehicle. If that's an RMA driven strategy, then that comes from a set of defined hierarchy of policies that drives that into a spatial kind of identification. What we're talking about is something completely different, which is artifacts and museum type. And it could structure. touch on that. I mean, the heritage strategy could, for example, touch on how the district will manage other heritage resources, you know, and, and, it, and it can talk about education and information. I mean, I've seen heritage strategies, they often talk about that. So there's, it, it isn't exclusively district plan related. It doesn't need to be that way. But given where we're at now and yeah. And the constraints that we're under, I, I don't know that it's the right time. Yeah, I think the point is that we don't have the expertise, so if we're going to do it, it needs this budget, and it's your decision about whether you want to do it. It's in the budget, <laughs> we want to defer it, or whether you want to... Yeah, I think that's a question. <laughs> uh, How do we get... Hang on, guys, we've got Gary, who's been waiting patiently, then we'll come to Peter and then Terry, please. I'm, I'm just looking at Anne Stewart Ball, hysteria, historian, <laughs> historian, who died uh, in March 23, and I'm looking, logging on her. Uh, she's got huge amounts on the creative Coromandel, all, all the history. It's all there. She's done it. Do you want me to send it to you people? Might save uh, having to <laughs> someone reinvent Thank the Thank you. World. I'm aware of her work. Yeah. Have you seen them all? I'm aware of it. Yes. You have them. I read it. Completely, but you've got them because I'm aware she's of done a huge amount of work, and I think. Probably that needs to be looked at first before we get some consultant in who doesn't have skin on the game. So we've got a we've got a decision in front of us. Um, let's let's carry on with the discussion and then try and get, land on a on a place where we're moving forward on this. Peter, can I can I just ask how did the twenty one thousand get into the LTP? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I certainly didn't. Um, we, I think it was raised as an item through the conversations that we had with councillors and we did an estimate of what it would cost to review the current heritage strategy. Terry? Right. So the, the answer, sorry, sorry just to that question up. was um, it came through your Blue Sky Thinking Day. It was one of the things that you put up. Um, we went and then costed that in terms of a, a, a specialist because we don't have the in-house capability. It's a, it's a you issue. Uh, oh, it's not a you issue, it's a you suggestion and it could be a you removal. Would you not point at me when you say that? <laughs> <laughs> you. Terry and Rekha, please. Yeah, I just feel that um, we've got a strategy. It, it kind of works. We never get a lot of money that's wrapped around at any rate. So it's a pretty small part of our business. I hear what you're saying, Martin, and that'll be nice down the track, but I think we, um, we can carry on with our current strategy, in my mind. I was just going to suggest a show of hands to, to take it out. So Leslie's kind of flagged that she doesn't think it's needed at this time. Um, so she's given us a bit of a signal there. Um, Gary, if you're done, do you want to just flick your microphone? Oh, sorry. No. Thank you. Um, <laughs> show of hands, the, the proposal is that it comes out, sends a signal, saves a bit of money. Yeah, comes out. All right. There you go. That's... What you need. Okay, so have we got a resolution already or should we move on while you draft? We got one. You got one, okay. 
Okay, mover please. Terry, Aye. seconder, Recker, all those in favour? Aye. Thank you. Terry. Thank you. Against, sorry. Robin and Martin, thank you. Okay. Abstain, sorry. Yeah. Um, and just to finish off this area, um, uh, resource consents and building control uh, on pages 133 to 136, um, most of that is out of scope, um, staff aren't recommending any changes. Um, so if we're happy to continue moving. Okay, um, all right, so uh, economic development and um, just to take some advice from the room, the in the table, the table in front of you, there are a bunch um, relating to Tawaka, um, district Housing Strategy, Resilient Blue Highway Investigation, Corporate Marine and Major Events and Walking and Cycling Strategy. Um, is walking and cycling? Could I, no, but, no, no, but just as a block, this is actually the ED budget. So whatever you take out is just taken out of the actual the budget lines and economic development. So there's different su uh, subject lines for each of those projects. Um, they're all budgeted for at the moment. So it's a discussion about um, we've said that um, in the advice on that table that there are some that could be deferred um, and some that shouldn't be or couldn't be um, or recommend, recommend not to be and some that could be. Um, could I just speak to the Tuwaka one without having a view on it? I have been contacted by Chris McClay at the Regional Council just asking what our um, intention is in terms of funding the, the phoenix that rises out of the ashes of Tawaka. Those are my words, not his, but that's essentially what it says, and more words than that. The ashes. Um, okay, so all of these are in, and so I guess what we look at, do you want to take them one by one? Lorna's here. So um, with Tawaka, I would rather understand what the Phoenix is going to look like before allocating funding. Thank you, Peter. Deli, and then Robin, please. Um, that was kind of what I was going to say, which is take it out now, see how that situation evolves, and then look at it in the next year. Thank you. Robin? Um, rather than taking it out completely, could we sideways shoot it off towards the screen industry? Because oh. what... You know, I noticed that in the on page one four two, it says it's suggested that the Waikato screen be a function delivered in conjunction with Tuwaka, um, which is not actually a thing. So now that Tuwaka is no longer in the picture, does that advice change in terms of what we could do with this? And is this a really valuable economic development thing to do? If you listen to the submission, it certainly is. Clever suggestion. I support that. All right. So there's there's let's turn that into a resolution. All right, so the resolution is that the Tewaka funding uh, be diverted I, I, to Waikato Screen. I believe that they didn't want as much as we were giving to Tewaka. 15 and a half, and a half as opposed to the 35. So we, we get some savings as well. It's a win. Ari, do you want to take them separately? Is Could it going I? to be easier to? So our suggestion would be um, if you are. Is that in support, seconding, or no, no, no. sorry, speaking? Yep. The, if you read that report around the, the screen industry, mm. and I was a big fan of supporting, is it Waikato Screen? screen? Waikato, yes. There are other conduits for that. We can actually remove that money completely and not support because we've already got um, people working in the screen space. So if you go through the notes that accompany that, we can actually get rid of that full 36 without redirecting it. Which 36? The Tawaka 36? The yeah. Could, uh, just just remind you, we've had film by plenty of approaches to look after us for nothing. Could I suggest we not confuse yeah, the two I'll, issues? Yeah, please, you know, yeah. Let's talk about Tawaka, Tawaka and yeah. we can pick up something else. Correct. The other thing. Okay, so the, the the proposal is that we we separate those out. Are you okay with that, Council? Um, okay, so <coughs> we look at Tawaka independently yeah so just as a suggestion if you're um if there will be other ones we could have a resolutionary that is about removal and then underneath bullet point the ed ones that you want to add in there so you could do an informal show of hands about what goes in and then you could do the whole resolution 
for ED. So we'll we'll work on that. It sounds like Tawaka will go into well, will go into that resolution to be removed. Yeah. Um, so moving on to the next one, which is the district housing strategy. Can I just sorry? I just want to be really clear. Are, are we removing it from the full 10 years of the long-term plan, the contribution to Tewaka? Well, they're closing down. Right? Right? Yes. So. Yes. Sorry, I should reword that. Yep. Are we removing um, the budget for a contribution to an ED agency of some sort for 14 years, or we're we removing it for one year with a view that further discussion is to be had around the Phoenix? We, we can't make decisions around uh, a, a Phoenix until we see <laughs> what the Phoenix <laughs> looks like. So um, I, would, I would propose that we look at Tewaka, make a decision around that, and then revisit the economic development I agree. stuff because I agree. we don't know what it looks like. Absolutely. Okay. So, so Tawaka will be in the resolution. Um, is there a? Uh, is it? Are there any questions or a show of hands on the district housing strategy? Um, whether that's in, whether that's um, to be removed or whether you want to leave it in. So I'll be clear on this, and Peter's asked me, you know, be clear on where I stand on things. We've had not a day goes by when we don't get uh, questions asked about housing. I, we don't have a housing strategy, and I think we need one. So I, I do not want to see that removed. So whether it's part of spatial planning, or it, it, it obviously needs to be, but I think we need a housing strategy. And it seems a small amount of money to, to put into a housing strategy. John, please. Isn't that what the spatial plan does? Uh, I don't believe the spatial plan specifically it is detailed enough to cover a, a housing strategy, but I'm, I'm open to discussion on that, especially for those people who know more about planning yeah, than I do. Through the Mayor. So the, the strategy would encompass not just because the, the spatial plan is about infrastructure and planning, whereas the strategy will look at a whole range of uh, types of housing that we can uh, collaborate with other agencies around. So it, things like w working with the Waikato Housing Initiative, um, they have Habitat for Humanity, they have um, uh, what they call CHIPS, which is like a community housing um, investment um, portfolio. So it's about looking at where we want to focus the priority around those sorts of collaborations and the, the other types of um, housing to look at is um, they're doing it up in um, Kennedy Bay and it's about uh, different types of housing for iwi as well. So it's looking at that spread and the strategy about where we prioritise different forms of housing for different parts of the district. Uh, go Peter and then Gary, please. Oh, I just wanted, could we hear from the chair of the sustainability and whatever the other thing yes. is. <laughs> whatever SACRA stands for. Uh, no, I would absolutely be um, adamant that we should keep this in because it is a really important issue and um, it is something that the committee has been talking about and, and is pursuing. So yes, please keep it in. Thank you, Gary. What's the 36,000 going to be actually spent on? So it'll be spent on co co uh, coordinating where all the different projects are and then looking at where council want to focus their attention. So it would be things like um, putting together a, a, bit, a bit of a work program of where the focus is for different parts of the district around housing and what those initiatives are. Who, who would be doing it? So that would be a piece of work that would be done through the economic development team. With them. Um, I, that's an operational decision that we would take depending on what resource we have and what capacity and capability we would have on the team. So I'm going to I'm going to make a comment on that if I may in response to what Councillor Gottlieb's raised and it's a good point. Um, we did a series of hui around the uh, district um, which was uh, helped and facilitated by the Waikato Housing Initiative. And that provided a whole bunch of really good information about the spectrum of housing needs and where councils sit in that spectrum and what role councils can play. And it was really valuable stuff. So there's a good place to start. I had a conversation the other day with Lee Hopper about some proposed developments that he's doing. And without a housing strategy, basically this stuff just goes charging forward. And does it fit in with our council? 
plans and, and strategies or is it completely outside? So without a housing strategy, we're at the mercy of whatever comes along and I'm not comfortable with that. So I think we need a housing strategy. Um, Terry, please. I support this 100%. Alain has done two, two uh, trips to Fongamatar and spoken to developers. Um, I, I also, he, he brought the analogy around what affordable houses was, which we didn't understand. We thought it was low, cheap houses, but it's actually in the middle there between the, the people, what the developers do and what the lower government does with its uh, housing plan. One of the things that came out of it from the, from the developers on feedback was that uh, we're prepared to take the risk in that, but we'd like health council to help us ease the pathway to make these things happen. So I think one of the things that I'd like to see if this stays in there, there's some support around that level of um, guidance through their consent processes as much as spending the money at the bottom end on those who can't afford housing. So that, it was a real f fantastic thing that uh, Len did when he came across there, but it just needs a little bit more of a tweak. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. I think if we, we're one of the few councils that I've spoken to that does not have a housing strategy, and I think it's a, a big part of our responsibilities. So I, I don't want to see this removed. I think it's it would be letting our communities down if we take that out and don't support it. That's my feeling. Do you want to, should we go to a show of hands on this? Those in support of retaining the funding for the housing strategy? Those against? Okay, thank you. Okay. Does that help? Yep, yeah, we'll move on to that. Um, so the next one was advice on the Blue Highway investigation. Yeah. <laughs> Show of hands to defer? Yeah. I'm, now I'm just, and I'm going to throw a bit of context around this. The regional land transport stuff that we've sat through, John and I have supported Blue Highway all the way through this. What we've been told very clearly is that the government has completely removed it from the GPS. Um, no matter what support we give it, uh, it ain't going to happen until we see a shift in focus, and that shift in focus isn't going to happen anytime soon. So for us to spend 41 grand on something that is not supported at any level, um, including the, the, the Coromandel Ferry, which isn't going to happen, so um, at the moment, we'd be throwing good money after bad. Do you want to so defer it to year two, or are you wanting to remove it out of the LTP? Remove. I get rid of it. Remove. Okay. Remove. Okay, so it can be included into that first. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Corpu Marine Centre. Um, remove, defer, keep. Um, Questions? Yeah. I'd like to speak to this if I could. Sure. Too. Yeah, I, I feel that this is their business at the moment. We've put, well, the community board at Thames has put a lot of money, $15, $16 million into this project. So I think they've stood up and done the job. Um, I think it's now to the business associations to, you know, secure their feet under the table and then start to drive their business north, west or south, which way they want to go. So I, I think we've done a lot for these people. So I'm looking for them to step up. Can I just ask where we're at in terms of our operational plan, Aileen? Is that, a, is that an unfair question at this stage if things are still in progress? We have a tentative date for opening on the 21st of June. So I'm talking about the operational plan for the, uh, for the operations going forward. Is that going to be part of that? Uh, well, that will take effect as soon as we open it. Yeah. Um, and the two gentlemen who would speak to it are actually sitting through there interviewing somebody at the moment. Okay. So. Right. Thank you. Uh, Martin. Could I just ask Lorna what, um, what you think the impact of not investing 26K in that area? It, it seems a tiny, tiny amount considering this huge amount of um, government and local and central funding that we've had, what, what's your assessment on what this will achieve for the businesses and the, and the community? All right. Uh, it would, this is about um, attracting more businesses to the area 
which would be of a wider benefit. It is more about the investment um, prospectus and uh, that connection of bringing uh, other businesses from outside of the district to Kopu. This is seen as an area that's got growth around um, areas to be able to invest more land for business. Um, so, you know, you just you would be as, as um, the other council said, be just relying on on your local businesses to be doing this um, on the behalf of council and the business associations if we didn't do it ourselves. But potentially those businesses may just be looking at themselves and other surrounding businesses rather than looking outside, which is what this 26K could do yeah. to bring new money, new jobs, new people in. That's right. Uh, Rekha and Delhi, please. So I've got to admit, I don't know a lot about this project, but on the radio on the way over this morning, the Business Association was talking about this opening next month and it will bring 100 jobs with it and things like that. So we've got an opening next month, but we haven't, none of this work around the economic development has been done yet. Uh, to, yeah, the work, the, there is work, but to like continue that into the next financial year has not been, that's why it's in this budget to con continue to do that. And we can't promote something until we knew that it's open and functioning as well. So there has been the initial investment campaigns, but it's just to continue that for uh, the next sort of, you know, stage of bringing more business to the area to use it. Okay. Dilly, please. Um, isn't it just BAU, though, what our ED team does, like working with business associations or, pr or promoting thing, or does this require a 0.5 FTE of a human or something to, to do that? I'm just wondering where the figure comes from. The figure comes from, it's, it's, it's not about a human, it's a, well, partly about a human, but also about putting in, um, in, in some collateral in a campaign to bring other businesses to, to for a case to invest as well. So it's going to that wider market. Terry, my quick one is around the continual maintenance and depreciation. That's another big number that this council or the community board is going to have to consider, and I just wonder, is this important enough to think when you consider those things? Really? Um, so that question's not on the table at the moment for conversation, um, but I would just say it's intended to wash its own face, that the revenue will cover the maintenance and depreciation. Um, and you, the fees and charges that you'll be considering tomorrow um, have some elements of that. And Lorenzo, Lorenzo or Glenn can be able to speak to it then. This is something quite separate. And what this is is, is about trying to find the folk out there that might come and maximise the fact that we have this brand new asset there and a huge amount of opportunity um, hanging, off there, hanging off having that brand new asset. Lorna, can I just say I, I get a feeling that um, councillors have... Been, uh, there's a lot of money gone into this, and there's a feeling that we need to take a breath, let it let it settle in, let it start operating. The the engineers on in Kopu have already indicated that they think that it'll generate significant income. Let it get up and running, and then take another look at what we need to do to take it to the next level. But the feeling at the moment is that councillors just think we need to take a breath on it um, and just try and get to rates and costs under control. Yeah, Your Worship, should you show hands to see if you want? Um, Lorna, just on these items we're discussing, <clears throat> these, uh, these are not specific projects that, uh, so does this may relate once again more to people resource, having people resource available to pick up on these various things and through the chair, this is actually in, in my ED budget as project lines and what, what those projects line, um, if I'm going into detail, is about the FTE and what they're going to need for this one. It would be about use of collateral and going and engaging and like bringing business. So that's a time and a cost. So this is what this is around, is just the amount that it will take to go and do that. So if you're removing this from the budget, you're just decreasing the ED budget. But just to clarify, it's not salaries. No, it's not salaries. It's no. other, other costs other than salaries. Yeah. And, and one potential new business here could pay 26000 in rates in the first year. So I guess that 
in many ways, this goes to the wider discussion around that balance, the push-pull with economic development and the appetite for council to invest in economic development and the payback for that. Um, and at the moment, what councillors are staring down the barrel of is just cost, cost, cost. And do we need to have a wider discussion around economic development? And Lynn? Mm, sorry. We've just bought a fancy new car and don't want to put petrol in it. Good analogy. So we've got this 15... <laughs> or electricity in our new car. Sorry, Gary. We've just bought a new car and we're not going to willing to charge it on our charging net charger. And it just feels to me like this is a very small amount of money to put in to get the best out of the investment that we've put in. You know, this is a lot of money and it's come from a lot of different places and it seems like peanuts not to get the most out of it. It seems really silly not to invest at this point. Okay. So Councillor Sinclair makes a, a very good, strong argument. Um, I'm going to I'm going to test the room. Those that want to keep it in to put petrol in the car, all right, electricity in the in whatever. Um, show of hands, of those who want to keep it in, please. I'm going to vote in favour as well. So, those that want to take a breather, leave it out for the moment. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Um, this is not. This is the motion. This is just a show of hands. Yeah. All right. So five each. What do you want to do, team? Do you want to? Well, it's not a motion. We can turn it into a resolution if you want to do it that way. I propose a resolution. All right. Let's turn it into a resolution, and then we can put it to the vote again. Does it? Because we've. It's no, in. exactly. It's in, and we're trying to identify in a resolution what you want to remove, and there's no. If that's going to go in and it's going to go. Yeah, just status quo. Status quo. Yeah. Happy with that, team? All right. Moving on. Thank you. Okay. So that, uh, the next one is major Thanks. events. So just to talk to this one as well, just recalling that this budget had um, decreased over COVID and um, with the storms, it's gone back to um, a level that um, is uh, and has been in line with previous LTPs. Uh, we um, have not had a lot of uh, submissions or people asking for this particular amount of money. Um, we are anticipating that that will ramp up, yes, over the next couple of years. Uh, so again, with this as well, it's part of um, a change in the scope of um, what the District Events Fund would be. It's around um, not just um, people bringing events to the district, but also community-grown um, events as well. So there's some, um, that there will be, if this is um, continued or agreed on, there will be some uh, frameworks around it and it will be brought back to a panel. Um, we're looking at potentially the uh, Community and Sustainability Resilience Committee um, is looking at that panel that would look at those if um, that's amenable. Kelly? Um, I think this is really important. And I'm just wondering if there is a compromise here. It does say deferred. I'd rather not see it deferred because of the economic benefit. But even, and it says it could be cut by 50%, which I think might actually hamper the work of that you're trying to do. So what about taking it down to a figure like 50,000 from 67? Make a little bit of a saving, but still show a commitment. Any further thoughts, Rika? Propose testing the room at keeping it as it is. It, it is a great economic driver. Let's show of hands. Keep it as it is. Okay, there it is. Thank you. Good. All right. Walking and cycling Delhi, strategy. Delhi, you with that. Okay, All walking right. and cycling strategy. This is currently in the budget and also there were submissions to this um, in uh, the LTP. Um, as you are well aware, we do have an active recreational biking strategy, but uh, this is a separate piece of work to that. Um, and it would be involving um, the roading team as well, because it's around uh, uh, curb, uh, footpaths and roads as well. Can we just clarify, please, because there's some de debate around the council table as to whether what we've got 
does constitute a strategy or whether it's just some good work done by Ali and Rick. Who's the other guy that worked on, Ali Davey, that worked on that? Um, the trial yeah, um, but does it constitute a strategy? Because I'm here, some, some people say it does, others say it doesn't. Can we just clarify, Mark, please? So, I mean, so, um, my understanding is yeah, that strategy was specifically renamed to be a recreational strategy. I'm thinking that this one is more around um, the ability of someone to be able to cycle from one of our um, smaller coastal settlements into the likes of a bigger town. So it's more about um, being able to get people off the out of their cars and particularly our older population, they can cycle from one place to another, get that, get some groceries, head back home again, as opposed to, you know, going going on a picnic or a mountain bike track. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. I might also, just because this is sitting more in Ro uh, Mo's area, Mo, do you want to make some comment about this as part of the, the roading activity? On it alone, I can have some information tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Uh, Robin, although there's a proposal that we park it till tomorrow. But Would no, that no. mean because we were going to be tackling all of mm. the things in one, does that mean that we would tackle all of them? No, I'll just say what I had to say. Um, so the at the last LTP, we had a proposal come to us from the Kauranga Valley Cycle group who came and said, hey, you know, we've got this great idea. And one of the reasons that it was not favourable was because we didn't have a strategy that it could sort of fit into. Uh, and so I wonder if it would help you to think rather uh, this has been a walking and cycling strategy as opposed to the recreational biking is, is to be um, a active transport strategy. So, and I, I think particularly of the really strong submission from Whangamata about the, the ability for people who want to ride in the Fungum Tower bike park to get there without using a car. And so that's the kind of thing we're thinking about, is the act of transport of, of getting somewhere to do what you want to do without getting the car. So whether that's getting your groceries or whether it's going to the mountain bike park or going to the swimming hole. And so that's the kind of thing that I think we're really missing. And this is, um, this is something I would really like to see pushed forward because it's got so many implications about so many other things that we... We do look like whether we fund a cycleway clip on across the bridge at Hetherington Road or uh, the cycleway up the Karanga Valley so that our children aren't um, compromised while trying to go swimming. So that's the, the bigger picture that we're looking at here. Thank you, Robin. Um, I'm going to suggest that we wait for Mo to come back with some information, push this back to tomorrow. Well, I guess the question is, does it, do you think that what Mo will say will change how you'll vote today? Because if that's the case, then pause it. But if we had a show of hands and we knew what we were doing. Yeah, I think we can do a show of hands for Mo. There are three infrastructure projects that everybody wants. It will be um, um, disappointing if anybody said against any of these. So put it up to the vote. Sorry, we're going oh, just to Mo talking about the cycling strategy, not about his. Oh, oh he's going to be a cycling yeah. strategy. Oh, no. If, if I can not also just be clear. Me, I like those three infrastructure things. Oh, but it is just to be late. clear with this one as well, um, Robin and Martin, what you refer to with the Kaunga Valley and the um, Whangamata mountain biking is actually in the active recreational piece of work as well. So it is there um, in the active recreation that, that we're saying that there's pieces in, in here that could be implemented through this that strategy and that's this piece of work. Separately, if you're wanting to do the walking and cycling strategy, that would be another separate thing in the roading activity that would be looked at. Mm -hmm. So if you look at what we're saying here, this is about implementation of some of the strategy work. So I'm just aware that every day I get somebody approaching me about um, projects that they're working on, um, walking and cycling stuff that's happening around the district and a huge amount of community work going into this. It is obviously a really big topic for people around the district. For us to take funding out that needs to be there to look at this, it, it affects every part of the district. I think it would be the wrong signal to send to all those people that are working yeah. in this stuff. So 
I'm going to suggest it needs to be, it needs to stay in there. I I just would like to understand, um, heard a lot about what it costs to deliver things and do things. Here we have a strategy. These are some implementation actions for $31,000. We're not going to achieve a lot. So that's part of the reason that we have the Coromandel um, Active Recreation Collective, which is the, um, and there's a hui that we're running in June, and there's lots of different um, groups that um, are all working together um, to try and do um, collective impact around funding. So if you look at, um, we're talking about the Tairua um, Pawanui River Trail folk, and we're working with them as part of this piece of work. They are also um, talking to the Bluff Road uh, people at Matarangi about how they can all support each other and do that collective impact around funding. So what we're saying is that through this implementation of getting different um, groups together, to help work on different pieces that are they have the same synergy, then you do get that collect, collective impact of try to get external funding as well. So what council contributes is a small amount to a bigger piece. Yeah. So in, in, instead of implementation actions, it's really a funding a, 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 a you body together. to bring people together to look for external funding. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So it's not about implementing lines on a road or no, cycleways no, no. or anything like that. No. It's helping to implement the projects from some of those community groups that are leading those community-led projects around cycling and walking. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to ask Aileen to yep. contribute. So we're just again. clarifying here. I think we are not quite joined up in what mm. we're talking about here. But if I could add my five cents worth, and that is um, my past experience I've had where the Eastern Bay of Plenty came together and pulled together a cycle strategy. It cost us very little, but it was basically a spatial representation of We've got this piece, we want to do this piece some stage, and this piece over here is underway as well, and then they'll all link up. So that was that was adopted across the three councils, and the regional council actually, across the four councils, and we all knew which bits we were going to do. We, um, we, what we didn't have was the funding, and so we took that plan, and that, that plan was signed off in about 2015, I think. And since then, it's gone forward to various funding things that have come out of local government, and you know, three or four of those have come off, and the the whole network is more robust. And and um, we, we've got a lot of value out of we got a lot of value out of actually just that small piece of work um, in terms of funding applications. The other thought I had is, given we're not that joined up, I'm wondering if, and it does sound like it's important, I wonder if in fact we should. Um, allocate the budget, but report through to the um, Sustainability and Resilience Committee on the scope and just make sure everyone's clear what that piece of work is before we um, start going ahead with it. Liam, it's a good plan. John, please. Um, I think it's time for a, a quick show of hands on it, and I'd just like to offer my support on this. I think that it's integral to the um, the Coromandel and what we stand for uh, in regard to providing these sort of facilities and having an overall plan on it, I think makes a heck of a lot of sense. So quite contrary to my view around a number of other things, <laughs> this is one that I think does need to stay in there and be supported. Thanks, John. So proposal is a show of hands. Keep it in. All right. Thank you, John. There it is. All good. While, while we have Lorna here, can I just, there are two other things that I have, don't see on this list that I would like to ask some questions about. Um, one of those is Destination Hauraki Coromandel, which we discussed last Friday, um, and the other one is our Coromandel magazine. Were they considered and... It is? I didn't yeah, you could, you could bring it forward. That's... That's under community development, but there's there's no reason um, that would be tidier to bring it forward to now in this resolution. Oh, we, yeah, yep. So so yes, we can respond to those two questions, Lorna. Yeah, yeah. So so with the first one with the Coromandel magazine, um, I did have some commentary. I don't know if that where that's got to, um, but from the eighty thousand um, dollars for the cost that. Um, is offset by approximately $50,000 worth of revenue per annum. So the net cost of making the publication is $30,000 roughly. And that sits again, it's in the uh, communications budget line. Um, if that was to be removed, uh, then that would just be something that would be taken out of how we, um, one tool that we use, um, and this is probably one of the main tools for our out of district ratepayers to connect with them. Um, 
if the magazine wasn't that tall and that budget was removed, then we would have to um, use less resource to try and find another way to target those absentees, knowing that they're about 50% of our freight payers. So my little bob's worth on it is that uh, I thought what you did last year was really good and in keeping with uh, people's expectations around how much a council should spend on providing that sort of information. I think of a big glossy magazine, which is an excellent production. You know, it's a very, very good quality. Uh, comes out, then I think it uh, creates the impression that we are spending a lot of money um, to be able to promote things much broader than what just the council activity is. So I I would support what we did last year and not to return to the um, our Coromandel magazine. And I think that would be very well received by a number of businesses that would actually, and and not mine, just to be very clear, but uh, businesses that uh, see that as a competing publication. Billy? Um, totally agree with, with John. Want to see um, a similar publication to the PEV down one from last time. It is $50,000 of money out of local businesses. Um, it's not really a good look. Um, I would also argue that our, our um, you know, our, what is it, 11 ratepayer associations just in our ward have got very robust websites as well, and a lot of people do follow the TCDC social media. They are very, very well in touch with their communities and the Coromandel and what's happening. So um, we've always had in Mercury Bay a very strong anti from our ratepayer groups about the magazine. It's, it's been a theme now for my 11 and a half years in local government that our ratepayer groups just don't, don't see that it's the best spend of council money or ratepayer money. Thank you. Robin? Have, have you had any feedback from anybody really about the fact that we didn't produce a magazine this year? Have, has anybody come and said, oh gosh, I really missed the revenue that it got because people saw me or, oh gosh, I really didn't miss? What, any feedback at all? Uh, through through the Mayor, yes, we do get feedback. They um, have, uh, our rate has come to the council offices and we have had emails saying we missed the magazine. Um, but the booklet, I think, um, you know, we did say that the booklet was in replacement of the magazine and, you know, that was funded by recovery money. Um, if we did something similar, we would still have to have some budget in there to do that. And um, so we would be suggesting, you know, a figure to be put in there for that. Thank you. <laughs> Any, any further discussion on this? So just on that, um, it's currently in. So, and we've got a resolution of the things that we're removing. So if there's no appetite to um, touch it, then it doesn't go up. If there is a, if there is um, a majority of hands that say add it to the removals, then we would want to include that into the. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's currently in, okay. Um, I'm going to declare my support because I like the magazine. I think it adds really good value. I'm going to uh, support it staying in, um, but I'll open it up for councillors to say, so those who in favour of yeah. taking it out. Yeah, go ahead, Gary. But we're going to have to pay some money if we do the lesser version. And what's the difference between the two? So I've just um, had a quick look at the budgets for the other one. So it would be, you'd be having the budget, so it'd be about 40,000 for a book like compared to the 80,000 minus the revenue for. And can I just test that? There's no revenue, is there, with the book club? No, there's no revenue with the book club. So with the magazine, there is some advertising revenue. With the booklet, there isn't. But you're competing directly, like in terms of magazines. Um, You've got the likes of the Informer on the Eastern Seaboard and um, other publications yeah. doing their own summer magazines. So, so Your Worship, I wonder if you you just test it being in or out, and and we can go from there. So, um, you're about to put it to the group about whether you wanted to remove it. Is that what you're asking? 
Can I ask okay. another question? Yeah, go ahead. Go. It, it, it's, it seems to me the magazine, although it may be perceived to be competing, it's more information on how the council operates. No. You don't think not? No. Okay, okay. Sorry, the booklet, the yeah, recovery booklet info. was. The recovery booklet was, and I gave out a whole heap of those, and, and it was really well received. The magazine does its more... Um, it's a showcase. It's a showcase, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's summer info for non-resident ratepayers. Talks about our dog bylaws and freedom camping and all of the things that you would need waste transfer, that useful stuff. <laughs> all the stuff that you would find on our website. Yeah, so just a, a show of hands about whether it's to, to, to remove it. <laughs> removing it? Can I just ask another question? Uh, with the glossy one, after you get your expected revenue, what's it? What's the cost going to be? Net. It's about net 30. 30,000 after. The so that, so it's about 50 it's going to cost. So the, the magazine costs about 80,000 and then minus the advertising revenue of 50,000, it's at around 30,000 in production costs that, TC, that, that my comms team absorb in the budget, in the, in the comms budget. If we did the booklet without any revenue, we're looking at about 40,000. So was that commission figure you're giving, oh, is that, that gross less, or right, net yeah. after you've paid uh, your advertising? Yeah, so that's is... after, yeah. So I just I just mentioned staff time as well, which is, is also um, a hidden cost. Yeah, and, and I also just emphasise again, it's the perception of a big glossy magazine being sent out as well. But... Martin, please. But again, that that the effect of that could be offset by some comms and storytelling going out saying actually this costs a dollar per rate per helping to promote our local businesses, et cetera, et cetera. So Yeah. And so can I suggest like the previous item where there was about twenty minutes of discussion and you all agreed to keep it in. Um, <laughs> I think for the sake of there's a there's a, a uh, perception issue for sure it's tabled the budget is going to be negligible so it's literally about a vote about whether you want to do the magazine or not and i'm going to ask for a show of hands yeah. to keep it in show of hands to keep show, it in show of hands to keep it in please keep it in there you go that's and yeah. take it out one two three four gary it, it, it does <laughs> It, it doesn't one, matter, two, there were five. Three, four, one, two, where were you? There's five with you, Your Worship, so it, it, it's, it stays in. It stays in. Thank you. No, no, we're not. Uh, there was destination. We're not, even there, we're not even there yet. We had destination hierarchy, Coromandel. Destination I think John hierarchy. raised that one. Yeah. And we should talk about that. Well, I, it's whether it's going to be included. I need some advice about whether it even can be discussed about staying in a removal. Destination Hodaki Coromandel, the budget that we put there, should that be included in the... Should we, should we pass the resolution on the things in the table? And then we can have Destination Hodaki Coromandel. Yeah. Okay. Destination Hodaki Coromandel? No. Uh, we're not, water will be an infrastructure. Yep. Oh, have we written them all separately, have we? Oh, we didn't write them all as one.
Yeah. Oh, we, we, we don't mind moving them all into one, but we were just going through the process as we were listening. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful stuff. We can move it all into one. It's completely up to you. Right. What are we doing? <laughs> putting it all into one and then putting it up. Okay, so we got item one. So so we so we are moving them all into one, but we just we, as we were going through the process. Oh, no, no, no. We, screams why Kato wasn't discussed. So we've already decided on all of these. Can we get one mover and one seconder for the whole lot, please? Terry Walker moving. Martin, are you seconding? No, no, yes, no. Is that procedurally correct? I, I thought you'd have to do one, each one separately. Let's stop. Everybody stop. <laughs> um, give us a second, guys, just for the team to, to work out the process. So 60 seconds for the, for the team to go through the process and make sure they've got it all lined up right. So... Oh, so we're going to be. You can go off before you know. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Thanks for not. Nearly there, folks. Nearly there. Um, so while that's being worked on, I just, I, um, just a suggestion, I guess, with 15 minutes to go, is that we will probably get through, if there isn't too much further debate, economic development, but we won't get to community development. Um, and we'll pause there because we do want to give you an update from the finance team of where we are at. Um, so before you leave here today, so you kind of know what that, that number is. So there'll be this resolution and then um, there's a question that we will answer around destination Hauraki Coromandel. Um, so it looked like there's only two two things that ended up making the cut. So we're well, making the cut. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so we mover and second for that. Okay, so we've got moved by Councillor Walker, seconded by Councillor Revel. Items one and two, all those in favour? Thank you. Passed. Great. Right. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, which we haven't got to yet. So, um, there, there is a uh, Councillor Grant. I might just ask you to confirm your question around destination Hauraki Coromandel. Sure. Um, at our meeting on Friday, we talked about various um, things that we could really take a second look at in regard to uh, opportunities for some um, savings in regard to, to cost. And 
destination, Hauraki Coromandel, was one of those that um, that we had a, a talk about. And my feeling was that there was a, a general view amongst the people that were here that um, whilst we had already discussed it, it was still an open topic from a council perspective. And now we were talking about allocation of funding for it. Um, so um, I just wanted to see the continuation of, of that discussion so we could see where we uh, were heading with that. Yeah, totally. So that's how I recall it too. It was still very much an open subject. And um, I have views about um, Destination Hauraki Coromandel and the review that was carried out. And it didn't, as I said on Friday, end up where I expected it to end up. And actually, instead of um, containing the DHC, it actually started to expand it and cost us more money. And the DHC to me is a little bit, and I'll use my colleague's analogy here, it's a little bit like an old, owning an old car that's blowing blue smoke. And why bother putting petrol in it or more petrol? <laughs> so I, I just I just think um, that's a huge cost to this council. I wasn't advocating slashing the five hundred thousand dollars, but I was advocating stopping budget increasing towards to to more. I wouldn't mind seeing a reduction in the budget, but I don't think I'd get that past the councillors. So um, yeah, I'd like to see what other councillors think about it. Just a point of clarification. I don't know um, with the cost increases, they'd only be inflationary because we have said that there's no increase. It's the same amount um, that we had been funding them for. So there was no increase in, in that budget. So Laura, can you just correct me? I, I believe that there was as a result of that of council's decision um, a, few, a few meetings ago that we were in actual fact going to go and approach um, the Hauraki District Council. And if they were agreeable, then we were going to increase the number of um, directors on that board by two, which had a cost implication of about $33,000. And then there were other costs that were going to flow through as a result, uh, legal fees, trust documents, all sorts of things that we had to address. And there, could, there was no figure able to be given on that. So those are the cost increases I'm talking about. Through the, through the mayor. I'll just have to go back to that report because in, in regards to the director's fees, we were looking at just the same quantum being um, divided between those additional directors. So that's the discussion point that we were having. If, if Mitch was online. Yeah, I'll um, grab him. You're just going to grab him? Yeah. Yeah, I, de I definitely remember an increase of $33,000 then an unknown quantum after that. If this is quite a big topic, do you yeah. think we should park it until tomorrow? I'm just thinking we're going to get really tired and make mm. sort of rapid decisions on something that might need a little bit more debate. Dilly, I, I agree with that. I think what we're doing here is just flagging the, the information that we want the team to bring back for discussion tomorrow. Yeah, but certainly not, not getting into too much detail today. Is that fair? Uh, Comment, Lorna? Yes, please. That, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, and the other factor that needs to be part of that discussion is the integration with Hauraki District Council, because I know that if we were to make some major changes, it would affect their um, operation of that contract as well. So we need to take that into account. Uh, um, we lost Brian. Leslie. Temporarily. He's are we are we just about at this part coming comes. back to community development in the morning? Yes, but so before you went, we thought we would get a bit of information from the finance team about where we're sitting with rating. Um, can we can we just tick off screen my cato before we move on? We've got a resolution just about ready to go on the screen. Screen wake up door. Okay, so the resolution in respect of economic development activity, the budget of 15,500 per annum 
Chris Greenwhite had to be added to the LTP, moved and seconded by Councillor Gary Percival. <laughs> uh, Martin is seconding. That's what's on the table. Those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Okay. Peter, thank you. Okay, that's carried. Thank you. Did we have any other stuff that we needed to to deal with, Hayden? <laughs> yeah. Um, we started the day with a rating uh, average rates increase of 13.3, and we're at 13.2 now. Oh, yes. <laughs> Haven't we done well? Okay, so what do we want to finish up with today? Is there any stuff that we need to just um, flag for information for the table for tomorrow? Yeah. So, so as long as um, we're happy that that's the end of the ED activity tomorrow, we'll we'll um, probably start the day with the building um, resolution, which we'll work on um, this evening. Um, and then into community development. There's quite a few big decisions to come still in the infrastructure space and the and uh, consultation items around key decision three uh, and uh, key decision uh, fees increase. Just while you left the room, uh, there was a conversation about destination Hauraki Coromandel and bringing back some information tomorrow to so we'll, enable we'll, that discussion. Okay, so we'll start the morning with... Um, Building destination Hauraki Coromandel, but then we're going into two of our um, uh, key decisions and then infrastructure, and that would finish report two, and then we would go still go into our um, policies and then fees. Um, and we've got the rest of that list. Uh, that will be under infrastructure. Yep, those final three will be under the infrastructure uh, waters. Yep. Okay. Hey, well done, you guys, yeah. for a tough day. I think well done, you guys. Um, as Robin touched on, um, you know, discussion and debate that potentially in the past hasn't happened. So, thank you, thank you, team. Fantastic, well done, much appreciated. Cheers.